afternoon, everyone. Um, introducing Miguel Jacques. Well done. Thank you. I, was, <laughs> I had an instructor for Miguel to pick me up as soon as I got that wrong. So thank you. Um, this presentation we're about to have given to us is about Aga, Sky Skynet for Drupal. Uh, just in the other rooms currently, we've got the Drupal 7 theming and temple inherit template inheritance, the dark art of business analysis in the CMS room, and in the Melbourne room, the Fuse projects, nine Drupal sites for the education sector. But in this room, Agar, Skynet for Drupal, Miguel. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks. That was nice. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for making the, the right choice. <laughs> a lot of you have, it looks like. If you, we can probably fit some people sitting up the front if you want. Hold on in. All right. This is my get out of jail free card. It's, uh, it's a rather ambitious talk, as I said in the proposal. So if I do run out of time, uh, or in fact, even if I don't run out of time, on your way out, grab a copy of the handout. It's both sides covered in links that go into uh, further detail. Lots of other screencasts I've done that go for hours and hours and hours. Lots of articles. It's a very good resource. Um, if you don't want to carry a piece of paper around, yeah, grab the electronic copy. That's fine. So, who am I? If you haven't met me, my name's Miguel Jacques. Um, if you've heard of MIG5 in the Drupal community, I'm that guy. Um, what do I do? I'm a freelance sysadmin and consultant, mainly to other Drupal agencies who uh, can't afford their own sysadmin or d can't justify having a full-time sysadmin on the payroll. And I just help people manage their servers and deployments and, and that sort of thing. I am Melbourne-based. I was born here in Melbourne, despite the, the funky name that my parents gave me. Um, and I am an Agia core developer, which is why I'm here pretending to know what I'm talking about. On the agenda, agenda, I should have cut that out, it's, it's not good. I'm going to cover off a few different things. Um, wow, we've still got people coming. Um, what is Agear? I'm going to give you a brief introduction. If you're not familiar with Agear at all, I'm going to introduce you to the idea of Agear and what its purpose is, what it's designed to do. I'm not a big fan of slides, despite what we were seeing so far. So I'm going to try and jump into some practical demonstration, uh, beginning with getting around the web interface of Agear and just the day-to-day -day basic usage that you tend to, tend to do in Agear. However, I know that we've got quite a few people here who've seen about 500 Agear talks before by myself or other people. And so you're going to be bored out of your brain. So I'm going to try and wake you up halfway through with some more interesting stuff, command line usage, and also automating upgrades to your sites or releases, which is the Skynet component. Uh, I don't think that's ever been sort of demonstrated in an Agear talk before. So you heard it here first. Also, sorry if it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> And if we have time, I'll field some questions. I may run out of time, as I said. Um, come and see me afterwards if you've got questions. Happy to, happy to field that. So, what is Agear? To put it briefly, it's a Drupal-powered hosting system which is built to help you provision and manage large numbers of Drupal sites. That's an abridged sort of explanation. You can read a bigger blurb from agearproject.org. Now, what do we mean by a hosting system, a Drupal-powered hosting system. It basically comes in, a, in the form of a web-based control panel. So if you've ever used a Plesk, Webmin, cPanel, um, it's nothing like that. It's good. Um, no, it's, uh, it's, it's very specific to, to managing Drupal sites, um, but it does operate as a control panel. Um, and it is built in Drupal, so if you're new to it, you should be fairly familiar with the interface because it is a Drupal 6 site. It obeys most of the usual Drupal 6 uh, rules. And as well as a control panel, we've got a few bits that run on your server, such as Drush. If you're not familiar with Drush, it's, a, it's not Agear specific. It's a command line tool for managing Drupal sites. We make heavy use of Drush in Agear, and we have a few other little bits. 
on bits and pieces. So because it's a Drupal 6 site, as the old Drupal idiom goes, everything is a node, or at least was up until Drupal 8 when they made node optional. Um, your sites and your code bases are what we call platforms in AGIR, and even your web servers and your database servers, they're all represented as standard Drupal nodes. So that's, um, that's why you should be fairly familiar with it. And you basically manage your sites and your platforms and your servers uh, through the form of tasks, which appear as like little buttons attached to those nodes and you basically launch tasks on those sites. We're going to go through demonstration. It hooks together in, in an interesting way. I wanted to spend a little moment to explain how I think of Agear, because I think it helps people who are new to it uh, to understand it better. We tend to divide Agear up into two halves. A front end, which is what I've briefly been talking about, the web interface. And we have the back end, which is all the server side components, such as Drush. The front end is really just there to help you store data through submitting node forms and obviously displaying it back to you nicely. But that's really all the front end is there for. It's actually the back end which takes the data from the front end or from the data that you throw into it. And it's the back end that does all the grunt work in Agear. It does all the heavy lifting of installing sites, generating, uh, creating directories, setting permissions, generating Apache and Nginx configurations creating and dropping databases and so on. For that reason, it doesn't really run on shared hosting. So because we have all these back-end components that expect to have pretty good control of the server. But don't freak out because these days, if you're using a Debian-based uh, Agear system, uh, VPS or Linux system, it is pretty much as simple as an app get install Agear these days. Um, there are some more instructions at community.agearproject.org to set up the dependencies, but that's basically all it takes these days, so it's a lot easier than it used to be. All right, I've had enough of slides. Um, but yeah, we have a bit of a tradition with Agear Talks that we do a live demonstration. They usually blow up in our faces, so Picard's a bit worried. So I'm going to run through setting up <laughs> platforms um, and what platforms are. I'm going to then demonstrate installing sites, brief little journey into Drush Make, which you heard a little bit about this morning at Dimitri's talk and also migrating, which implies upgrading sites. So, that's not what I want. That's what I want. That's a bit too... Is that better? Is that better? Can you all see that? Or is that too... Too small? Too small? All right. Is that better? All right. So this is an out-of-the-box A-gear system. It's running on a virtual machine on here. I haven't really done anything else to it. So that's basically what you get when you install Agear. We have the global queue block over here, which displays the recent queue uh, tasks that have been pending or have completed across the board. And you have, that's basically a site um, node list, effectively. You can even run bulk operations and things on sites if you have more than just one. What I'm going to demonstrate, oh, was that a bit loud? What I'm going to demonstrate is uh, First of all, creating a platform. So in Agear, you have to create a platform before you can install a site. Platform isn't something you ever really hear about outside of Agear. It's kind of an Agear-specific terminology. It never really caught on elsewhere. That's a shame. Um, but basically, a platform is just a code base. It's a copy of Drupal with no sites on it. So if you downloaded the Drupal tarball, that's, that's a platform as far as Agear is concerned. It doesn't have to be vanilla Drupal, it can be a Drupal distribution such as OpenAtrium, like what Dimitri was talking about, or perhaps your own custom distribution with your collection of your contrib modules and so on. So, I want to install a site, but first I have to create a platform. I'm going to create a Drupal 6 platform, just going to give it an arbitrary name, and I'm going to cheat because I'm, I'm a sysadmin, so I, I take shortcuts because I'm lazy, so forgive me. Um, that's an absolute path on the file system to uh, a copy of Drupal 6.22. I actually already have it on the system. This is my Agear system. You can see that the Drupal 6 platform is there. That should all look pretty familiar to you. So it's important to point out that to create a platform in Agear, you have to already have put that platform on your file system already with one exception, which we'll go into moments, uh, in a moment. So I've already downloaded Drupal 6, so I can now come in and say to Agear, 
I've got this platform, this code base here. I want you to start managing it. I'm not going to mention Makefile yet, but we will come back to it. So I'm going to save that node. And what we've seen here is that a task has entered the queue. We have it in the global queue here because it affects AVU across the board. But we're now looking at a saved Drupal node with a bit of metadata. And it also has its own little task management area here. You can see it's gray as opposed to green because it's currently in a pending or a queued state. What that means is it's sitting there in the database and we have a cron tab on the server that comes around every minute checking for any tasks that are pending and if it finds them, well I've been yapping on, it's already completed. When it finds that task, it sort of formulates that into a drush command and actually goes and executes that task on the server. I won't run through explicitly everything that it does, but it's interesting to view the task and see what happened. There's a lot of... Oh, oh, sorry. There's a lot of noise. There was a lot of noise. Um, but basically all it's doing is doing a bit of a package scan. Um, so it's found 33 modules in core, six themes, and the default install profile. It also goes and sets uh, a bunch of permissions, makes sure that everything looks pretty sane. But at that point, it's basically aware of this platform. We can actually start doing interesting things with it. So what I'm going to do now is node add site. Taking shortcuts again. Just going to give it a, a domain name, so a URL. Something I happen to know already resolves to localhost. And we have a few other options here, some of them of which I can't choose, such as client. You can have multiple clients in Agear, so you can attach sites to different clients and you can set different permissions for clients and so they can only see their own sites and that sort of thing. We only have one install profile in the system at the moment because we only have Drupal 6. And we choose our platform, which is our platform we just created. We have a Hostmaster platform here, but that's just for Agear itself. We should probably actually hide that. Uh, that's a feature request if someone wants to make one. Um, we only have English language available on this platform and we only have local hosts on this server to actually store the database. So this, it's just a site form. There's nothing amazing there. We're just using standard hook form stuff in Agir. And now that's actually created an install task for the queue. So it's a little bit different to the verify platform task that we saw. This one's in operating in a site context. So it knows it's actually being told to go and create the directory structure inside that code base and run through the process you'd normally do if you went to slash install PHP or, or whatever. As well as that, it goes and then, uh, well, yeah, creates the database, generates the Apache configuration, restarts Apache to actually take that site live. So that's basically the purpose of this whole thing. I just a little, you can see it's actually running now in real time. Unfortunately, we don't get a sort of live view while we view this task, but we should do that at some point. Oh, that's actually already completed. So, once again, I'm not going to go through all that, but you can see that we create all these directory structure. Um, Agear operates in multi-site mode, so it never installs anything into site's default. There's complicated reasons why, I won't go into it, but it operates in multi-site mode, so it creates this 1.mig5labs.net directory inside the platform. And I can show you that. There it is there. And you can see the settings, PHP and everything has been set up. Uh, and you can see the Apache configuration has been generated for us as well. So it's done everything that uh, you'd normally do by hand. You even get a nice little login link here once you've installed a site. And that's our one-time login link and that's it. So that's basically the point of Agear. That's, that's what people know about Agear, in that um, just by submitting a form, you get a site. And as I said, it doesn't have to be a vanilla Drupal site. You can be installing a, dis a distribution, and it will go and run the relevant install profile for that distribution and set up something like you know, Open Atrium or whatever. So you can see that now that the site's been installed, we've got a whole bunch... Oh, sorry. I don't know what keeps causing that. Um, now that the site's been installed, we've got all these extra tasks that are available to us now. I'm not going to run through all of them because they're pretty boring. Um, 
for the purposes of a, of a talk, you can sort of work out what they do, such as backup and restore. Um, we've got some other nice features, such as cloning a site, so you can make an entire copy of a site, including its database, but under a different URL. You can disable the site. That's a personal favorite of mine. Client, client doesn't pay the bill. You, want to, uh, you don't want to destroy the site. You just want them to not be able to see it. So um, that's a useful feature. Uh, there's also Migrate, which we're going to talk a bit about now. So Migrate is an interesting feature that allows you to move a site between platforms. And that doesn't sound like much, but the really interesting thing about that is uh, a migration in Agear can imply moving a site to a newer version of Drupal or to the same version of Drupal but with a newer version of a contrib module or say if a security release comes out. So the migrate feature is really useful for putting the site on that new platform and invoking uh, like Drush Update DB or running equivalent to running update PHP and applying any of your database changes to your site. And what's more important is that if anything goes wrong in this process, Agear is capable of detecting that error and rolling back the change uh, and putting the site back on the original platform as though nothing ever happened. So it's a very safe way of applying change to your site. And that's basically what we're going to talk about now. I'm going to be a bit... Uh, risky, and upgrade the site that we just created on Drupal 6 to Drupal 7. And it's maybe not that risky, I'm cheating a bit because I haven't got any contrib modules on there, so I know it's going to work. So um, famous last words. Um, but it's a pretty, for a vanilla Drupal 6 site, it's pretty straightforward to upgrade it, say, to Drupal 7. What I have over here is a Drush Make file. Who here has heard of Drush Make or is using Drush Make? Yep. Okay. Most of you are. Um, I have a very simple Drush Make file here. Uh, Drush Make, if you're not familiar with it, for the benefit of everyone else, it's, uh, well, as Dimitri said this morning, it's a, it's a package management system for Drupal. It allows you to create a file like this, specifying what version of core you want, what version of contrib modules and themes, and even Git repositories of your own custom modules. Drush Make can assemble all that for you and give you a complete package at the end. A package which, in fact, represents a platform in Agear. So it's not something Agear specific, Drush Make, but we work very well with Drush Make in Agear. We've even got core components in Agear that can use Drush Make because we think it's a really powerful tool. What I'm going to do is create a Drupal 7 platform, just like we did before with, but, uh, for Drupal 6. Once again, I'm giving it the absolute path to Drupal 7 on the file system. But this time, as we saw earlier, I don't have Drupal 7 on my server yet. I've only got Drupal 6. So I said earlier that you absolutely have to put Drupal, uh, the, the platform, on your server before you try and create the platform in Agear. I lied. You don't actually have to do that. Uh, if you're using Drush Make, you can actually break the rules. But breaking the rules is more fun, as we're about to see. So this time, we've got this make file field here, and I'm going to pass the absolute URL, in this case, to a Drush make file. It also works if it's a local file on the server. You can pass it an absolute path to that make file, similar to how we did in the publish path. And I'm going to save that. And we've sort of seen this before, but it's going to operate a bit differently. Because I've provided a make file to this platform, Agear is going to go, huh, there's no platform there, and it would normally throw an error at that point and say, what the hell are you doing? This time it's going to go, huh, no, there's no platform, but you provided a make file. I'm going to actually invoke Drush Make, and I'm going to build that for you. So that's why I wanted to show that, because I think it saves time. Um, you don't have to go and download the copy of Drupal onto your system in advance if you're using make files. And as we'll see later, it means you can programmatically add platforms with Drush Make automatically from, from the command line or from tools, other tools that can automate the command line. So our verify task is completed. And just to really drum my point home, platform path does not exist. Fetching from Drush make file. And there it goes and invokes Drush make and fetches Dr uh, Drupal 7 from Drupal.org for us. So it's gone and done that, set up the platform. So at that point, I could go and create a new site on Drupal 7, 
you can see here, if we go to create a site, we now have extra options for install profiles. That's because Drupal 7 ships with a few extra install profiles compared to Drupal 6. I'm not going to do that because we just did that. I'm going to go back to our first site that we created and I'm going to use the migrate feature. So when you click migrate, some of these tasks open up a little modal dialogue like this. Some of them don't because they're simple tasks. This one expects some more input from you, so that's why it loads this. We have a few options here. We can move the site to our Hostmaster platform. Again, we should probably get rid of that because that's just confusing. But we can also move the site to Drupal 7. And you can see there's a little bit of metadata here saying there will be 31 upgrades taking place to this site. There is one warning. There are no errors. If there were errors, it wouldn't even let me click on Drupal 7. It wouldn't let it happen. An example of an error is where there's a version of a module or it's an older version of Drupal. Drupal doesn't allow you to downgrade your sites because schema changes to the database might not like that. Uh, so if it's a valid target, a valid target platform, you can migrate to it. So we can even compare pa uh, packages. So we can actually see specific modules on that system, their current version or their schema version if they've had database changes, uh, like hook updates, and the corresponding target version some of which are missing. There's clearly more than one missing, so I don't know why it says there's one missing. That's probably something for me to fix. Um, other things are missing because we're expecting them to be missing. For example, there's no blog API apparently in Drupal 7. There's no Marvin or Manelli themes. Um, ping module's gone. And a few different things. It's worth looking at that if you're moving your site to a target platform and say that site had views and this comparison package comparison tells you there's no views on the target platform. Don't get complacent with these missing modules because during the migration process, views will get disabled on your site and that could break your site. So it is worth checking um, whether or not you care about these missing modules, whether it's safe to proceed. In this case, it's vanilla Drupal, so why the hell not? So I'm going to kick that off. A again, as you see, a task enters the queue and it's in a pending state. It's all very repetitious in A-Gear, but it's all designed to be very elegant. The same procedure applies for basically all tasks. So while we're waiting for that, I want to talk a bit about the migrate task because it's quite interesting. What actually happens in A-Gear is it takes a backup of this site, including its database, makes a nice little tarball of it, takes it to the Drupal 7 platform, unpacks it, and then makes sure everything's in order. It creates a new database, so it doesn't operate on the existing database of this site. It actually creates a copy of the database, imports that database dump into it. Oh, I should also say it sets the site offline initially to stop any other changes coming into the site. It then runs the Drush Update DB task, which applies all the database changes. In this case, there's going to be quite a few because we're jumping to Drupal 7. If it all goes well, it takes the site out of offline mode and it updates the Apache configuration to say this document route, this path to this site is now Drupal 7. And then basically restarts Apache and deletes the old site, the original site from Drupal 6. So it, it actually leaves the site on Drupal 6 in its original form while it proceeds through all that. And that's, that's the safe step that I mentioned earlier because if any of those steps fail, particularly the Drush Update DB step, it knows enough already to know how to erase everything, did, everything it did and say, I didn't do it. Your site is still on Drupal 6. You know, go away. So, so it's a really safe feature. If, you, if you're think, thinking out there, why didn't you just go through and do a drush up and update everything in place? Um, because I've got clients that are paying me enough money to not do that sort of thing and break their sites and make them unhappy. It is, as far as I'm concerned, the only safe way to apply change to your site. It doesn't have to be an A gear. Uh, you don't have to use A gear to do it, but the whole methodology of building new releases every time and moving your site to that release with rollback functionality, I, th I, just, I think that's the only way to do it. I think you're crazy if you're not. So, and I can say that because I'm not in the business of making sites, so I can, I can be on my high horse. I'm a sysadmin. I'm not going to go through all this actually. I was going to, but there's a terrible amount of information jumping to Drupal 7. 
But in case you didn't believe me, we can actually have a look at the site. You can already see it's looking different. Where are we? There you go. Drupal 7 now. So that's it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, interesting point. We actually supported the upgrade path between Drupal 6 and Drupal 7 prior to Drupal itself supporting that. They had a broken upgrade path and just related to the actual problem it was, we were actually able to sort of get behind Drupal in A gear and well, I'm trying to make it sound like a good thing. It was a hack, but <laughs> we made it happen. So it's, um, yeah, A gear can do quite a few interesting things. I don't know if we really want to run through much more of this stuff because it's pretty straightforward. That's the clone feature. I, should, I will actually point that out. You can clone a site, as I said, to say a new domain. But notice that I can only clone it to Drupal 7 because now that this site is a Drupal 7 site, I can't clone it back to my Drupal 6 platform. You can't do that in Drupal, so you can't do that in Agear. Someone tell me if they have done that in, in Drupal. I'll be, I'll be impressed. Um, what I probably actually should have done Initially, instead of migrating, let's pretend one dot five labs was my production site. I'm crazy if I would have just migrated that to Drupal 7. Cross my fingers. The clone feature is really cool for that because it, it means you can simulate this entire procedure. You can copy your site to, even while it was a Drupal 6 site, I could have cloned it to Drupal 7. So in effect, simulating what's going to happen in production. If anything went wrong there, that's an even safer way of applying change because you've done it on a test site that, that didn't matter. So I probably should have done that first, but I'm reckless. And it's not production. Um, that's it. Uh, do you really want to see clone? I don't know if you really care. It's, you know what it's going to do. It's going to clone the site. That's what a clone is. Um, that's about it for the basic demo. I, I'm sorry if you think that's a bit rushed, but I think that you get the idea. That's basic usage, the day-to-day -day stuff. You can back up sites. You can restore them. It's all... The web interface is great like that. There's a lot more you can do as well. Sorry, you had? Can I just ask, um, cool. you showed sort of like the situation where if the upgrade fails, it would roll back to the base domain and say, can you go on? But then if it, if it succeeds, does it actually delete that rollback functionality or does it leave it in place and stop the user? Okay, so the question was, uh, when, when it does migrate the site and there's a rollback feature in case it fails, if it succeeds, what actually happens with that rollback feature, can you roll back later at a later date? Is that basically what your yeah, question was? Uh, no, you can't currently do that. Um, the rollback feature is actually a function, um, but it's currently hard coded to on the event of a success. Or what we, it's actually called a post hook, which only happens if, if it didn't fail. Um, it deletes the original site. You, you still actually do have a backup of the site. It, it generates that backup first. Um, you would have to restore that manually from the command line, but we do have a task, a command that lets you do that. You can say deploy, uh, drush provision deploy path to the tarball, and it will go and unpack that original site. But it'd be a bit of work involved in there. You'd only want to do it in anger or. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yep? I just might have to repeat my question. Um, is there, a, is there a, way, a method or a, a practice of being able to back up a whole Drupal site database and files? Yep, so the question was, can you take, say, the tarball of the site and the database and effectively import that into to A gear? Uh, yes, you can. We've got instructions at community.agearproject.org. Um, if you're taking a site that's never been in A gear into A gear, you can basically unpack that onto a, a platform. You set up a platform first, or maybe your tarball comprises the entire Drupal platform. You can, as we saw at the start, you can add that platform first and then go node add platform. You can add it first on the file system and then node add platform. During the verification procedure of a platform, AGIB will attempt to find any sites that are on that file system, except sites default. It never looks at that. So you have to move sites default to sites foobar.com if that's what you wanted. AGIB will automatically discover that site and it will actually spawn an import task in the AGIB front end and suck it into Drupal so that you can manage it, uh, suck it into AGIB so you can manage it from the AGIB interface going forward. And you can also re-import a site, as we were saying before, that used to be in A gear, 
using the tarball with the drush provision deploy command or, or unpack it manually with tar, whatever. The procedure is basically the same. Yes? So then the system treats all sites as multi-sites, but you could use it to split a multi-site up into individual sites as it were or to merge them together. So the question was, can you split multiple sites up into different sites on the one platform? Yes, you can. You can't really merge them together using any sort of AGI tool, though. Maybe come see me afterwards with what you mean. I'm going to try and jump through a bit more because we're only halfway through, so I am very short on time. Contrib modules. People have been writing contrib modules for AGI, so lots of extra features such as HT password protection for sites, backing sites up to the cloud, um, lots of integration with other tools that you'd know, such as Ubercart, CVCRM, FTP integration. There's a lot of stuff happening outside of AGI Core. Have a look. You, it's like any Drupal module, pretty much. You can drop it in to your AGI system. There's also other things you can do, so, such as invoking the API, so you can inject extra settings into the Apache configurations, into your settings PHP if you need to. We've got a whole API which you can have a look. I don't think I'm going to have time to run through much of it. Advanced usage. You can tell I'm getting excited about advanced usage. Um, going to try and wake you guys up. So the front end, it might be okay. We've just seen it. It looks nice. It's pretty. Um, it does a lot of cool stuff. But I'm a sysadmin, and the command line is, is just cooler. I'm sorry. It's, it's better. I think so. The reason being, you can do things like automate releases. Because I should elaborate on that. Because you can use the command line to operate A gear these days, you, couldn't use, you didn't used to be able to, but I'm going to go into that. Because you can operate AGIR from the command line now, it means you can automate AGIR because of the command line. And if the ultimate aim is to work less. I've said it a few times, I'm a sysadmin. I, just, I don't like working. It's, I want to automate everything. It's, a, it's an instinct. So I want to talk a bit about the back end. It's gonna, it is advanced usage. It might be over more than what you need for some people, but I think it's going to be interesting for quite a few. We spoke about the back end at the start and how it's comprised of Drush. And I said a few other bits. The other main bit is called provision. And provision is an AGIA specific uh, component. And it's actually an extension to Drush. So it really just provides Drush with extra commands. It's provision that does all the real heavy lifting that I said at the start, the installing of sites, the creating of directories, database management and Apache configuration and so on. You can see the commands available that are the provision commands. You can go drush help, grep provision. So there you go. So the savvy people will recognize that these tasks basically correspond to tasks in the front end that we were just playing with, such as uh, install is provision install, and the verify is provision verify, and migrate, for example, is provision migrate. So they all kind of match up with the front end. That's, that's deliberate. You can get more information on a specific command line uh, command by going drush help, provision, migrate. So just as you would with any other drush command, and you get a little bit of information. It's formatted a bit badly on this monitor. But you basically get an example of how to run it, what it does, any optional arguments that you have to apply. Oh, optional arguments that you have to apply. Optional arguments. I'll just shut up. Um, so yeah, so you can get a lot of information from the A gear commands or the provision commands in the usual way. That's the basic format of a Drush provision command. So what we have there, first of all, is a Drush alias. Everyone aware of Drush aliases who's using Drush? No one's using Drush and doesn't know what an alias is? No? no I didn't think so. Drush aliases were introduced in Drush 3, I think. We're now on 4 or 5. Um, aliases are just yeah, a simple way of referencing a lot more information about a site by performing that basically that at symbol and a recognizable name does a lookup of a a text file on your system and finds a whole bunch of key value stores. We can actually have a look. There's our one MIG5 labs. So you can see it's, it's a standard sort of key value 
mini database of sorts with information about the site, where it is on the system, what platform it's on. Notice even the platform is a Drush alias itself, so is the web server. So even the database server, it's the same thing in this case. Um, everything in Agear uses Drush aliases these days. When Drush aliases were introduced, we basically refactored a hell of a lot of it in Agear to always use Drush aliases. So the first thing we ever do, we didn't really see it before when we installed a site. It just created an install task and then bam, the site was running. The first thing it actually does is generates that alias so that it can then go, go ahead and use that alias going forward. Uh, I don't think Drush actually has a command to generate an alias for you, funnily enough. I might be wrong, but um, I think you generally have to make them by hand. We have a special command in Agear called Drush Provision Save. Whoops, I just saved an empty alias. <laughs> that'll be interesting. I wonder if that'll break my later live demo. Probably not. So you can see there's, there is a whole crap load of options you can provide provision save to generate an alias like the one we looked at just before. So that's all the same sort of keys that we saw in, in our one MIG-5 labs, it's this stuff. So if you're gonna operate Agear from the command line only, you don't wanna use the front end or you wanna use the front end less, you have to have generated that alias file first before you can do anything else. Nothing else will work in Agear until you have that alias file. Uh, yep. Uh, so the question was, when you invoke stuff like that, do you mean the whole command or generating the alias or whatever? Provision. Um, you do have to operate as the Agear user um, when you're using Agear. So um, the main reason for that is provision is normally located in the .drush directory of the Agear user. Uh, technically, it doesn't have to be, but you should operate as Agear user anyway because it could go and create directories with the wrong permissions and then not be able to... Agear won't be able to change them later if it operates as its normal self, so always operate as the Agear user. So the next component is the actual task. So in this example is provision migrate, as we saw. And finally, this is the optional argument, like what I mentioned. Not all provision commands have arguments. Some do. Migrate obviously does, because you have to tell it where to move the site to. So that's the argument. In this case, it's another alias, as I said. It's the alias of the target platform. Who's seen that before? <laughs> yeah, a few people have. I wrote an article on my site back in 2009 with a very SEO friendly title, something about solving the dev stage live pro problem in Drupal. Um, yeah, it gets me a lot of visits still. It's probably not what people want, but it gets me a lot of visits. Um, it wasn't intentionally that malicious. Um, I didn't draw this, but it's, it's in that article. It was actually drawn by a another developer, a Drupal developer called Adrian Simmons. It's basically describing what we saw before when I mi migrated the site between Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. The intention that I'm trying to show here is your live site is on platform 1.0. You built it with Drush Make. You want to apply a change to it. We skipped earlier any sort of step of going to dev or you know, stage or whatever. In this case, we clone the live site to dev. That ensures we get the latest copy of the database, the latest content. A few people have been asking about that in other talks. But to do that, we've generated a new platform called 1.0 dev. So it's separate from the production environment completely. It could even be on a separate server because you can actually create platforms on remote web servers in Agear. You do your work, you hack call, whatever you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. You push it all back into Git or you update your make file or something as opposed to what a lot of people do, which is immediately go back here and do your git pull or your SVN up, or God forbid, FTP and overwrite your live site. All that is on the fly. As I said, I don't like doing on the fly things. So the Agear model is to generate a new platform, 1.1, with Drush Make again, containing all your new code, your fixes, and use the migrate feature, step six, migrate the site, do it all very safely, it can roll back if it fails, and so on. I'm just drumming that point home again, because that was 2009, and as I said, it still gets me a lot of visits. It's still the best workflow as far as I'm concerned, the whole release and migrate cycle. But it was always very time consuming from the, 
from the GUI. No one wants to be in there going node add, platform, and you do pretty pictures, and it just takes forever. And when things take too long or they're too hard for developers to do, they just won't do it. And, and that's not their fault. The tool should be better, as far as I'm concerned, uh, to make it appealing. Why not let Skynet take care of it? Um, it's creepy on the big screen. A couple of tools that I've started to use over the last year, year and a bit, have allowed me to improve that workflow. The workflow is still the same, the tools are better, and the automation is here. One of those tools is Jenkins, formerly known as Hudson. If, if you're not familiar with it, it's a continuous integration server that allows you to uh, run tests of, on sites and basically um, or run tests on code and report if it's succeeded or failed. More generally though, Jenkins can poll something like Git, or a, a GitHub repository for example here, for any changes, and if it detects change, it can spawn any sort of arbitrary task you want it to, which could include running a whole bunch of commands on a remote server, which could be an Aegis server. There's a sort of pretty diagram of what I'm talking about. So a developer pushes to Git, Jenkins sees that, goes, oh, something happened, talks to the Aegis server. You have the old platforms here, generates platform three, migrates the site to platform three. We can actually do all this automatically now in Aegis, thanks to a few extra features. And I've actually written code that does that. You can actually get it at GitHub and, and have a play around with it. What it basically does, my code anyway, uses Fabric, which is Python library for talking SSH. You could use Capistrano, it's a very similar tool written in Ruby. Kim Pepper's doing an awesome Capistrano talk after this. Highly recommended if this sort of thing floats your boat. What does it do? Generates the new platforms alias with provision save. Verifies the platform with a makefile argument, which actually, as we saw earlier, invokes Drush make, builds my platform. Basically, then just migrates my site to the target platform, which in turn invokes Drush update DB. And then it runs this magic command. I call it the ab abracadabra command because I actually didn't even know it existed for a while in AG. <laughs> just kind of snuck in there. Adrian wrote it and uh, briefly mentioned it. Uh, it didn't sound like anything I thought I'd be interested in, but I, I love it. The hosting import command used to, uh, well, basically what used to happen is you could, the front end sends data to the back end, always. But if you did something in the back end, say moved a site between two platforms, the front end wouldn't know that you did that. And next time you tried to use the, the front end, it would just blow up in your face. There was no sort of communication back from the back end to the front end. There is now, thanks to this command, hosting import. Hosting import basically looks at the Drush alias, grabs the current key value sort of information from the alias file, and it tells Aegir to update its front end. So that could include, if you migrated a site from the command line, you could run hosting import on a platform. Uh, you can actually run it on the site as well, I think. And um, the front end would suddenly be aware that it's on this new platform and everything is still in sync. Are we ready for another one? I think we should. Have I got time? Oh, we're finished. <laughs> Just do it anyway? Oh, peer pressure. All right. Um, okay, so I won't go through that. I have a site called deploy.mig5.net. It actually is a real site. I haven't just made it for this demo. It has a Drush make file. We're actually very fortunate because just the other day we had a security update come out for Core. They didn't roll out a new release of Drupal, but they said you have to edit your HD access file and remove this special entry. Um, this site also has a few other, I'll tell you what, I have this other site. I'm just going to blatantly overwrite it. I wasn't planning on doing that, but I feel rushed now. So it could blow up in my face. Updated stuff. Git push. So that's a Git repository, and that's a make file. I didn't run through it, but I've basically got a patch that's going to patch the HC access file. That's right, it's the sort of legal way of hacking core. But they told us to do it, so 
And it's also going to update views from an earlier 3.0 version of views to the latest views. And another module, I think. So I have this task over here on my Jenkins server called, confusingly, deploy deploy.mig5.net. And it's basically, as I said earlier, I won't run through how Jenkins works. We don't have time. I wasn't going to do it anyway. You have the Git repository there, so it knows what to track at GitHub. You've got a cron tab style syntax here, which is saying poll source code management. Check every minute for a change to that Git repository. If there was a change, run this god awful mess here, which is basically my, I can't really get all the way over there, unfortunately. It's basically my open source code on GitHub. You can go and have a look at it yourself later. That's going to connect to my remote server and run all those commands. It would automatically detect it. We don't have time. I'm going to force the build myself. We can actually watch it in real time because Jenkins has this really nice real time action here. You can see that the site was, page access was patched up here. Drush Make allows you to insert patches into a make file and it will just patch whatever you told it to. So it's built my new platform. It's importing that into Agear. It's backing up the site. It moved, it's uh, no database updates required, that's good. And now it's telling Agear, this site is now on the new platform. And I'm kind of thinking, I, don't, I didn't really properly prepare to uh, prove to you that it happened, but you're just going to have to believe me it did happen. Success, see? It, it happened. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> yep. All right, I'm out of time, so thank you very much. If you want to come and see me.